Friday afternoon. I have been so lazy today, but I have a good reason for it. Didn't get up till 11 o'clock this morning. Actually, it was 11.15. Now, I never sleep that late, no matter what time I go to bed. But I had a rather active day the day before and all day before Wednesday and Thursday, let's put it that way. Let's see now. Jan headed out for uh, South Carolina yesterday, early in the morning. She and Charlie were going to South Carolina shrimping. And I said, well, Jan, you don't have to go to South Carolina for shrimp. Kroger's got plenty of it. I see it every time I go shopping. Well, she rolls her eyes when I tell her things like that because, and of course, I don't ever get an invitation to go with them. For one reason, I don't want to go shrimping. I don't want to get in a fishing boat and get out in the middle of the lake or river or wherever they were and get sick on that water when it start, the boat starts going like this. You can count on me getting sick. And I don't know how to swim. So the main thing I was concerned about was whether or not Jan was going to be wearing a life jacket. And I forgot to tell her, make sure you wear that life jacket on that boat. Because I didn't know how well she knew how to swim. And I wasn't sure if if uh, Charlie was going to swim out after her. So anyway, <clears throat> they're doing in South Carolina doing their shrimping. I sat here today. Now mind you, getting up at eleven fifteen, and at two o'clock. I was taking a nap. That ought to pretty well tell you that I had a busy day the day before. But the way it started out was two of my viewers on my channel living in Georgetown, Ohio were coming to visit me. They wanted to meet Granny Pat. Okay, that's a good idea, but see, I'm not good at entertaining people, and I worry about whether I can keep them happy and entertained the whole time they're here. I don't worry about liking them. I worry about them liking me, and saying Granny Pat ain't all she cracked up to be. So anyway, they came down, when did they come? Third, Wednesday morning, Joy and Bonnie. And Jen, of course, was going with us on our roundabout Lexington. And so, Jan was going to be the driver. She's a very good driver. She knows how to get wherever you want to go. And so we met Joy and Bonnie at the hotel where they had checked in. And Bonnie was driving the prettiest red Cadillac you ever saw. And Jan was going to get to drive her Cadillac. It, I mean it when I say that. It's, it's an older Cadillac, and I like the older cars. They were so much prettier than the ones that they make today. So Jan was going to do the driving, and we knew as soon as we saw them standing there, grinning from ear to ear, 
we already knew we were going to like each other and we were going to have a really good day. So, Jan and I had figured out where are the best places to take them, where can we show them things that they've never seen before. Well, one thing we learned, Joy and I were in the back seat, Jan and Bonnie in the front seat. Uh, we learned that years ago, Joy and her husband used to tra travel around Kentucky a lot. So they'd been to many of the sites that you might want to see. And so I'm trying to think of places that she hadn't been. And I asked her, have you been there? Yeah, we... We were there one time. Each thing I mentioned, yes, she had been there before. So finally I thought, okay, have you ever been to Cumberland Falls? Yeah, we went to Cumberland Falls. And I thought, well, I'm running out of ideas. We had planned to get, go to... Um, Irish Acres. It's several miles out in the country, and it's actually an old school building that was now a, an antique shop, two floors, and it divided up into rooms like the schoolhouse rooms would have been, and uh, two ladies that Jan and I knew owned the shop, and we'd been there various time. They also have a restaurant in the basement of Irish Acres and it's called The Glitz and it is glitzy. Women always like to go there. So that's where we were going to have lunch. But first, Jan said I want to take them out to the castle. Now some of you are probably familiar with the castle. You can go on the internet and probably find pictures of it. It's on the other side of Versailles, Kentucky, and it sits way back kind of on a hillside. And it looked like a big British castle. I haven't been there myself, but you can go there for dinner. They have wedding receptions, weddings, any kind of occasion that you want to uh, invite a lot of people, they make reservations at the castle. All right, we go through Versailles, and Versailles, I hadn't been there in years. And it was such a busy day, but everything had that old look They've got the old homes, and I really enjoyed going through Versailles. And then when we got through there, we saw the castle. We didn't go up to the, drive up to the castle itself, but you could see it very well from the highway. Now from there, we hit the road to Nonsuch. How many places in the United States have you been to that called none such? I doubt if there's another one. So we drive the two lane country road and Jan turns left into the driveway and Joy looks up and says, I've been here before. Well, I'll be darned. Yes, years ago with her husband, they had been to the Glitz at Irish Acres. Now, <clears throat> we got there in plenty of time for our lunch and for the girls to get to go through the building if they wanted to. But we could go ahead and go to our table in the Glitz and prepare for lunch. Now I can tell you this, it doesn't seem like you get a lot of food, 
but it's served in courses. And you have three choices for each, your appetizer, your main meal, and your dessert. You have one of three, one of three, one of three, one of three. And uh, we gave our order and we sat and talked and we laughed and we talked and we took pictures. And when we finished there, we went up there, looked around a little bit. We didn't go up on the second floor of the uh, antique shop. First, I should have told you that Bonnie and Joy both collect antiques. And from the stories I was told, there's no doubt that Jan and I are going to be making a visit to Georgetown, Ohio one of these days to visit Bonnie and Joy because Bonnie insists that we go through Joy's house. And Joy looked at me and said, I've got extra bedrooms. Well, that was a sure thing right there. We're set. We just have to set the date. So, anyway, we finished up at the Glitz. Everybody was satisfied with the meal. We had picture taken of each other, which is on Facebook. Jan put pictures on Facebook. If you go on Facebook, you'll see all the four of us together. And we were having such a good time together. You know, it's a funny thing about when you meet someone new and you worry about how you will take to each other. Will you have anything in common with each other? Do they have a good sense of humor? You gotta have a good sense of humor when you're around me. I, I just wouldn't know how to talk serious talk. Just so they did, oh yes. They had great sense of humor. And from there, I'm telling you about my two days now. You can do the same thing on your own. So we headed for Midway. Are you familiar with Midway, Kentucky? Well, some of you are, and the rest I'll tell you about it. Midway is an old town. Victorian homes, all the homes there uh, are Victorian. And it's a very small place. You have a railroad track that goes right down the middle of the town. When I say small town, I'm talking about the shops on Main Street Main Street is probably one block long, and the railroad tracks go right down the middle. And while we were there, we got to see a train go by. Now, they, this train didn't have more than a dozen cars, I don't think. But it's exciting to see something like that when, when we've grown away from those things years ago, and we never see railroad tr tracks. We never see trains, the kind with different kinds of cars. You have the, the c cars now are all loaded and they're just cars. But I remember when you got to wave at the passengers in the cars, oh, that was a fun thing. Uh, in fact, when I lived in Tennessee, the railroad track went right down the front of my house. You, I walked down the steps, crossed my yard, and there was a little two-lane road. And on the other side of that road were the railroad tracks. So I got to see a lot of trains go through. I remember the time 
you may recall a situation, and this was a sad situation, where a young couple was killed. I think it was here in Lexington. And they were murdered by the, I forget what they called the killer. He was, he was called the railroad killer, I suppose. He was, he would get on and off the train when it stopped at an intersection. He would climb aboard and then he would get off at another intersection. Well, one night Jan called me and she said, have you been reading about the killer? He had killed several people, different towns. No, you haven't been reading and watching on TV the man that's going from town to town killing people. No. Well, the thing she was concerned about is that my house sat about 100 yards from the intersection where the train would stop and then go on. And that's where the killer was getting on and off the train. Oh, Mom, lock your front door. Make sure your door's locked. All this, that, and the other. And I said, oh, don't worry about it, Jan. If he gets inside my front door, he'll kill himself before he gets to my bedroom. And I said, he, he won't be able to see what's in front of him, and he'll fall to the floor. Of course, I was trying to make a joke out of that. But this was the first place my two little granddaughters, they were like six and four years old, they would come to visit. And my front porch set up high, um, had banister railing around it and gingerbread around the porch, you know. Old houses, really, yeah, it's 100 years old. And they'd hear the train coming because you heard the whistle before it got to the intersection. And they would run out to the front porch and watch that train. Do you know how long it takes for a train to go by with a hundred cars? They stood there and watched every one of them. And Jessica, she was a six year old, counted them one by one, and when it finally went by, the caboose was no longer on trains at that point. They had removed cabooses from the railroad track. When it, that last car went by, she just took a deep breath and she said, whew, that was a long one. Well, that's just one of those little things you remember. It's your granddaughter, you know, and she could count a hundred cars at the age of six. So that's just one of my little short stories I always like to tell. But anyway, let's get back to uh, Bonnie and Joy and Jan and me. We're in Midway. And we're really not interested in the shops, so to speak, dress shops and gift shops. But we came to a couple of uh, antique shops. They were small, but the first one we went into, oh, it had the prettiest furniture. It just made me want to come home and clear out and start all over again. Beautiful, beautiful old furniture. And first thing I spotted were two chairs. And I thought, these are gorgeous chairs. Now, I had decided the next thing I bought was going to be two Windsor back chairs. Most of you know what a Windsor back chair is like. That's what I wanted next. These chairs were not Windsor back, but they were 
close to that style. And I asked if I could sit down in one of them. It was so comfortable. And I looked at Bonnie and I said, I want these chairs. And she was like, oh, go ahead and get them, you know. Sure I could. I said, Bonnie, I don't have any place to put two chairs like that. So Jan's over in a corner somewhere where there's some really nice pieces of jewelry. Jan had on a chain necklace hung about this low, and it had a ring on it that it had been her, one of her husband's, and she wore it all the time. She walked over and she had another necklace, gold chain, came to right about here. Just a plain little chain and then her other chain. And they looked so pretty on her. And she said, you know, I've been no noticing on television that all of the news ladies wear two necklaces. And I said, well, you know, I've noticed that too. They were thin, gold chain type, and they usually just have, some of them might have a little cross, or, you know, it was kind of like a, a keepsake item that you hung on a chain around your neck and wore it all the time. So we were discussing the fact that these ladies, we had noticed their necklaces when we watched the news. And uh, I said, I said, we ought to get that. She says, well, I've got a birthday coming soon. I knew that, and I'd been trying to think, what can I give her for her birthday that she'll really like? So I said, take it off, let me see it. She gave it to me, and I took it up to the clerk, and I said, Ask her how much it was. Well, the price was right. And I said, I'll take it. So she wrote up the ticket. I handed her my credit card, and I turned around, and I said, here, happy birthday. That satisfied Jan, and it took care of my gift that I knew she would like for her birthday this year. So got that task taken care of, and we went on down to another little shop and looked around a little bit. We were waiting for Charlie, Jan's husband, to come and meet us in mid Midway. He was going to be driving a big pickup truck. So go back across the tracks, and the restaurant had umbrella tables sitting out in a really wide sidewalk. And they had their uh, umbrella tables out. They were in the shade. The other side of the street was sunny and it was so hot. So when we sat down at one of those tables, nobody was eating outside. So we felt it was safe enough to just sit down at the table and relax while we waited for Charlie to show up. We were going to have dinner there. Janet already made the reservation and we were sitting next door to the restaurant. So we sat there and we talked a while and we laughed a lot and and Bonnie and Joy were such delightful ladies. It it was like sitting down with somebody you've known all your life. So at ease. Everything was funny. We laughed at each other the whole time. And we we just couldn't get over the camaraderie. How much we laughed, how we enjoyed each other, and it was like, oh my God, we've got to get together again soon. So I'm waiting for my invitation to Georgetown, Ohio. Of course, Jan will have to go with me because I don't drive on the interstate anymore. 
and she would have to go with me. So we'll send off Charlie on a hunting expedition or something, and she and I will go to Ohio because Bonnie insisted I come and see all of their antiques. Now, I saw some photographs, and I'm telling you, these ladies do collect nice antiques. So, we finished our dinner, and Charlie headed back home in the pickup truck, and Jan was driving Bonnie's pretty red Cadillac, and she drove us back home. They dropped me off first, and then Jan took them on to their hotel where her car was parked, and she went on home from there. So the next morning, which was yesterday morning, Jan and Charlie and a couple of their friends were headed for South Carolina to go shrimping. Well, they've got one thing down pat. If they're going out on the ocean, if they're going out on the lakes, and if they're going hunting and they're going fishing, they don't have to ask me if I want to go with them because I'm not into that sort of thing. And so that makes Charlie happy. Charlie is a very nice guy, and he go along with anything I wanted to do. But you know how men are. They don't want to have to be bothered with a woman that's afraid of the water and doesn't like shrimp and has to close her eyes when you start working with the fish. No, he'll never have to worry about me going to South Carolina with him. But Jan and I will be planning a trip to Georgetown, Ohio, one of these days. We won't be waiting too long because we know it's going to be a fun trip. So the next morning, that, that was Thursday morning, okay, Jan and Charlie are gone. So I met Bonnie and Joy at Feather Your Nest, the antique shop where Jan has four booths in that antique shop. And I met them there, and Joy already had her hands full of little trinkets. I call them trinkets right now, the antiques. And uh, something that will match one of her collections. And we went through the sh shop a little bit and we said, okay, Time for lunch. We drive down a half a block to the thoroughbred. They have very good food. We we had fish and hamburgers for lunch, and then we came back to the antique shop. <clears throat> now, we, there are two long aisles. You go down one, back up the other, and it takes a while to go through all of those little booths because it's a lot of, lot of things to look at. So Bonnie and I were standing together and she noticed, I think she was the one that noticed this little hat. We thought at first it was a doll hat and then we decided it was a child's hat. Now, she practically talked me into buying it because she picked it up and of course the first thing she did was look inside the band to see if it had a designer's name or a store name on it and it did. The little hat was in very good shape. She pulled it out and she looked at it and she said, This house hat came from Louisville, Kentucky. Well, she knew I had lived in Louisville, Kentucky when I was first married. And she says, it says, wait a minute, let me get the, let me get it for you. I'm going to show it to you. She didn't have to talk me into buying it. 
Now I want you to see the back of this little hat. This hat is at least 60 years old because it came from, see my doll, just happened to fit my doll, so I got it out so you could see it. Now first, let's go inside. See, it's got the little, and she pulled it out. And inside the band was Stewart's, Louisville, Kentucky. And I said, Bonnie, I worked at Stewart's in Louisville, Kentucky when I was first married. I said, this hat is at least 60 years old. Now take a look at it. It is so cute. And we couldn't decide at first if it was a child's hat or a doll's hat. And I decided it belonged on the head of a little girl. And naturally she says, I think you ought to buy it. You ought to buy it. Well, you know, it doesn't take much encouragement talk me into buying something. So I bought the hat. I've got another doll that might fit, but this one happened to have the hair. Now this is a doll I bought about 40 years ago at the gift box. And you see her long pigtail. And I said, let's see how the hat fits this little doll. So I put it on her head. It fit pretty good on the back of her head. And then I turned her around and I said, yes, I think my little girl can wear this pretty little hat on her head. Fits just perfect. Doesn't tell you much in front, but when you look at it from the back, Let's see if I can get around here. You can see the flower, the roses. They probably had a little color to them back then that they faded. But I don't mind that. I liked it because of the age of it and the fact that it was bought at Stewart Department Store in Louisville where I had my first job. So, now you take a cute look. This is a handmade doll. And when I saw her, of course that, I, like I said, I bought the doll about 40 years ago. And she, her dress is pretty wrinkled because I've had her in a little chair with stuff piled on top of her. So, anyway, she caught my attention one day and I decided, I wasn't into collecting dolls, but something told me buy this doll, so I did. Now I'm gonna sit here, sit her down here on the floor. And I'm gonna show you something else. <coughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. That didn't take long because it said spam risk. Don't you just love those phone calls? So I don't ever pay any attention to them. I just hang up. Now, I want to show you what Bonnie gave me. This was before they came to uh, Lexington and we were making arrangements. I got these in the mail. And I, you've seen them on my tablescapes. 
I think they are just adorable little birds. I love birds anyway, and these these were just perfect. Just just exactly what I would be looking for. So I'm trying to get hold of them so you see something besides my hands. Aren't they cute? So this will be one of those things that every time I do a tablescape, you'll probably see these two birds and more birds. She brought these birds to me when she found out I liked the bird, the bluebirds. Here's what she brought me. These cute little birds. Let me get them in my hands so you can see them real good. Aren't they precious? I've got four of them. So you can, she's so generous. They're so pretty. And what I like, they're just the right size to go with my frogs. You've seen my frogs. See, here's, they kind of remind you of the, uh, what are the, the, the three, no, uh, one over the eyes, one over the mouth. I don't remember what they are. Anyway, look at these. Aren't these the cutest little things? Oh, come on. I want you to see them good. There's, now I'm going to put that one down and get the other one because I only hold two at a time. I want these on every tablescape that I do because they are just so cute. These came from Jan. It's one of those days I went in her kitchen. She had a little shelf there, all these little knick-knack things on it, you know. And I looked up and I saw these three little frogs and I said, I'm taking these home with me. Take them. See, they don't mean anything to her. They're just extra things. But I thought they were so cute. And I don't know anything about them. I just like the way they look. And I like to use them in my tablescape. So, look at this one. This looks like me right here. Yeah, that's about the way I see it. So, anyhow, that pretty much covered my week, and the last two days, and today I have done nothing. I'm going to go in the kitchen. I'm going to uh, eat leftovers. I made chicken salad this week. I've got leftover uh, chicken noodle soup. How many things can you make with chicken? And I'm getting kind of tired of chicken. So I've still got the uh, chicken noodle soup. I've got chicken salad. I can make a sandwich in time I want it. And I also this week made, I love sweet potatoes with the brown sugar and nuts and things, you know. So I had a nice big potato, about this big, and I peeled it. And instead of uh, leaving it in the peeling, you know, and putting it in the oven, I sliced the potato. Sliced the potato till it was about, the slices were about that thick. Can you tell what I'm doing? Yeah. Slices were about three quarter inch thick. And I put them on aluminum foil because I knew I was going to make a mess in the bottom of a pan. So with the aluminum foil, it would catch all of the drippings. And I lined them up side by side. It made about six good slices. 
And then I, let's see, I had my brown sugar, my cinnamon, my butter, my pecans, all of that was sprinkled all over my sweet potatoes. Now, something like that in the oven takes about 25 minutes because sweet potatoes get done much quicker than your regular potatoes. So I had one night and still left over sweet potatoes with a really good salad and I had a pork chop, pork chop just about that big that I already had wrapped up, so I heated it up. That was my supper. I've still got some of the sweet potatoes left, and that is the best way in the world you can fix the sweet potatoes with the brown sugar and cinnamon stuff. Um, I don't know how you could not like them. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to have again for supper sweet potatoes, a good salad, and I don't need a meat this time. I'll just put that by the wayside, but I may have to get out one of my Hawaiian rolls because I like bread. I want bread with every meal if I can get it. But I've tried to learn to eat a meal without bread. It's not easy because I look and I know something's missing I gotta have a piece of bread. I have taken up a lot of time to tell you about my week. But I hope you have gotten something out of it. I mean, we all need a day or two of just downright fun and pleasure. And I want Bonnie and Joy to know that being total strangers and coming together as friends that you would have thought we've known each other all our lives. I know I'm going to be seeing them again and we are going to be good friends. We are already good friends. So Bonnie and Joy, I want you to know that and I want to thank you for your gifts and I'll see you soon and you too, my friends. So let me know what you think of this little story. It, it's just a rundown of a daily incident. I wouldn't call it an incident, experience. That's a first time experience. So you take care. Maybe the weather will get a little cooler. I'm not looking forward to winter though. I'm not a cold winter weather person. But I'm just about to get to the hour long story that some of you want. Some want short one, some want long one. Now I put it this way. If it's too long for you, just watch half of it. And then the next time you're looking to see if I have put a story on YouTube, watch the second half of it. That ought to solve the problem, don't you think? My sister says I need to smile more. Is this good enough? <laughs> Thank you for being my friend. See you next time.